Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new and you're stopping by for the first time, welcome. I am so, so happy to have you. I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tapping the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. So I'm sure you guys are wondering what the heck is going on? Why is she doing a face-to-face -face intro? But this week i decided to participate in the look for less challenge if you guys have been around for any amount of time you know that i love to do dupes and i like to make decor that i see that is just way too expensive that i am just not paying that kind of money for because i know that i personally can remake myself so for today i have for you this barn door glass jar project and it was originally $59.99 and I knew that I could make it for much less. I am participating in this with many other ladies and the hosts for this challenge are Nicole from The Week's Nest is the Latina Next Door's co-host and I do personally know Nicole from The Week's Nest. You guys, she is so sweet so kind and i really would love it if you would go check her out show her some support and the latina next door i've heard nothing but wonderful things about her so definitely go check her out as well both of their channels will be linked down below i hope you will give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let's jump right in Hey guys, I just wanted to pop on real quick and let you guys know while this intro is playing that I just hope that my videos are a solace for you in a really hard time while we're all bored sitting at home trying to stay out of huge crowds. So I just wanted to mention that and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away I let my head down if I want Okay, so I just start off by sanding my piece. Now, I did just want to mention that, you guys, I made this project for zero dollars. My husband is a carpenter and a handyman and all of the above. So, all this stuff I had laying in his, well, he had laying in his shed. But if you go to Home Depot or you go to your local hardware store, they will cut this stuff for you. At least I know that my local hardware store will. So, if if you just go and explain to them what you're trying to do if you don't have a handy husband like I do then hopefully they will help you out and all together if I had to price these materials out for just the wood would be about $15 I'll leave all the information linked down below of what kind of wood you would need um, that way if you guys want to run to the store and try to get some you can so basically I just start off sanding all of my pieces and then I take my wood glue and I glue all my pieces down I tried to clamp them I really need to get different clamps but my clamps were causing my boards to slide all over the place so I did end up just gluing it down getting it to where I want it and then just letting it sit for a while and um, you'll see in a little bit that some of it did come out uneven just because my clamps were giving me trouble but I go ahead and fix that with some wood filler so when I did this, my husband had all had it all cut and clamped for me. I wanted to film him cutting them, but when I had asked him to do this, he was out in his shed. I was inside cleaning, so he literally just did it, and I caught him at the tail end of finishing, so I did not get to film him cutting these, but he's really good at this kind of stuff so thankfully I have a handy husband to help me out so after I have everything glued down I did go ahead and do the frame first and then I went in on my X's just so that way my pieces would fit together nicely so after I had them glued this wood filler um, wood filler is kind of hard to work with I definitely recommend to use a putty knife I just used my finger and 
when I went to go sand it, um, I did have to sand for a good while. So I definitely recommend using a putty knife. That way you have nice clean um, edges. And then when you go to sand, it won't be all bunched up and you won't have to sand and hurt your arm. So after um, I went ahead and put my putty in these holes again this did this because the wood was kind of uneven I finally figured out that if I clamped the corners then it wouldn't slide as much um, because when you are gluing wood you definitely want to have something to hold it tightly together that way the bond is much stronger and then you will less likely have it fall apart so while my wood putty and my glue is drying, I go ahead and work on the jars. Now I've, I have a whole cabinet full of mason jars, so I found the ones that would fit perfectly on here and would look proportionate to the piece. So I just take my white Waverly chalk paint, I stick my hand in the jar, that way I can move it around on my hand and am able to paint around without having fingerprints. So I take my favorite brush, these are always linked down below, and I just go in a back and forth motion. Um, I just find that it goes on much more evenly and I only had to do one coat and I believe it's because of the technique that I use when I paint them. So after I have the sides painted, I go ahead and paint the bottom and then I take my brush and just go back over it just to make sure everything is even and then I dip my brush back in and I go around the ring of the jar where the lids would go and then I go ahead and even that out again. So I do that to both jars and then I set them upside down to dry that way the bottom dries as well and I just let them sit under a fan while I am doing the next part of the project. So here I am just sanding these down um, like I said before, obviously I'm not going to ping you guys with the whole clip of me sanding because it would have been like a half an hour of sanding. And I probably should have like went outside and used my electric sander, but the day that I did this, it was only 40 degrees out. And personally, that's just way too cold for me. But I did... Um, use a few different sanders. I started with my finger sander and then I went in with a block sander. After I had it all sanded down, I just take a very damp uh, paper towel and I just go over those spots to get all the dust up and to make sure that it is sanded down good enough to where I like it and to where when I stain it, you're not gonna be able to tell that I even filled this wood. So after I have it wiped down, I'm going to use my favorite stain, Jaco Bean. Again, if you guys have been around here for a while, you know that this is my favorite stain. It goes with all my other decor, so I figured I'd just stick with the theme. So I start by painting the X's. I use a foam brush and I'm actually at the bottom of this can of stain. I have been using this stain on all my projects and it's finally almost done. So thankfully I had another can, but I just start by the, doing the excess in the middle. I then take my paper towel and wipe off the excess. If you want a deeper stain, then you would just leave it. You would not wipe the excess off. Or if you want the stain to be a little bit lighter than when you apply it, then definitely use your paper towel to wipe it down. After I do one side of the X, I go ahead and do the middle of the X's. And I'm just going to show you a quick clip right here. You can see I took just a very tiny brush just to get in the corners because when um, you're using a foam brush, they don't always um, want to get inside of the corner. 
after I had my piece all stained I actually set it outside to dry just because the fumes I had the windows open and again it was cold so I didn't want to leave it inside and have the windows open all day next after I do that I take my finger sander and I just go ahead and distress my jars now this is a part that you can do as little or as much as you like I tend to go pretty heavy on the distressing just because I think that it makes it look more rustic and realistic and so I just go around the jar and I sand it where I see fit. I'm so sorry for that noise in the last clip, you guys. My husband had just started up his chipper and was chipping some wood, so I had to stop and wait till he was done, but I apologize for that weird noise. After I get done my distressing, I take a damp cloth and I just wipe the excess um, dust off and then I take my hot glue gun I put a little bead of glue on the back of the jar and then I just wrap my jute all the way around so at first I tried to um, glue where the threads were and put my twine over it that way but after doing this a few times I realized that it was just much easier to wrap it around and then go back over the threads once I had it wrapped and then it stayed in place much better that way um, but you can do this however you like it's as simple as gluing the end wrapping it around and then when you get to the back gluing the back and then cutting it so that way you don't see that it is pieced together after I have my jute on there I take my lighter and I just burn off all the excess twine that like hangs off it drives me crazy and I also think it gives a more rustic look so here is the bow that I have been promising you guys I tried to film it in the last video but some of the parts were out of frame so all you need to do to slow this down even more I slowed it down a right good bit but if it's not um, slow enough for you go to the right hand corner where you see the three dots and then you can slow it down that way or you can rewind and rewatch so I just make my bows I make two of them the exact same way just because they come out much more perfect and then I cut the ends to the length that I like after I have my bows cut and put together I go ahead and glue my bows on um, where I like so in this clip I was holding my belly and the baby has been kicking like crazy lately so I thought that it would be fun to add that the baby is saying hello so once I get my bows glued down I set those aside and we're gonna work back on our barn door piece so originally I didn't know if I wanted to distress this just because the way that the wood looks I think it is so beautiful with the different grains and just the way that stain brings out the wood just really I love it so much so in the end I did decide to go ahead and distress so I just take a natural bristle brush I got I get these at Walmart and I had a little bit of paint in the cap so I dab my paintbrush in the cap and then I um, dab off the excess and I just start out really lightly at first and then I go around the edges just because I think that when I do the edges it makes it stand stand out a little bit more and I just like the way it looks so obviously this step is optional but after I distress it in the middle I do go ahead and do the edges and I do that all the way around the whole piece then I can go back in the end and touch up some spots that need it but at first you just want to go lighter because you can always add more but it's really hard to take off if you're using it on top of stain so after I have all my distressing done to the way that I like it and I did want to mention I did just do the X's and the middle part plus the outer piece I did not do 
like where you see the triangles. So I just do some um, E6000 down the back with some hot glue and I glue them on. I do hold these for a good two minutes just to make sure that they're secured because if you are setting this up, you don't want your jars to fall off. So I definitely recommend to make sure you hold them for a few minutes just to make sure that the glue, the hot glue is setting up. So after I do the first jar, I go ahead and do the second jar the same exact way. And then I just add greenery. I didn't show me adding the greenery just because you can add whatever you like or you can leave it as is. It's totally up to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this challenge. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I am so happy to bring this to you. This is probably one of my favorite DIYs I've done. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Please give this video a big thumbs up and I'll catch you next time. Last night we had some